All right. Hi, folks. My name is uh, Erez. Uh, I usually go by Ben. But my original name is Erez Benary. Uh, I've been waking, making artwork since 2014, and then started making miniature books in 2015 until today. Um, as an engineer, I work for Microsoft. Uh, I've been with Microsoft on and off since the year 2000, so quite a bit of time. And I'm an engineer. I work for CSS, Customer Service and Support, and I support um, Azure websites. Uh, that's my product. Um, so let's talk about miniature books. Um, I guess the first question that comes up is why? Well, what do we want those things for? And obviously, uh, to me at least, uh, cuteness is one factor. Those things are adorable. Uh, I happen to have one right here. And as you can see, they're just teeny tiny and cute. Um, it's a very unique jewelry item. A lot of people like them as some kind of jewelry. For example, this book I have here uh, comes on a keychain, on, on a necklace. So some people like to wear them. This is a miniature of what to expect when you're expecting. And I've had uh, uh, quite a few pregnant friends who wanted to wear this on their neck uh, as if they're going to just open it in the middle of a poisoning and uh, read through it. I don't know. Um, for me, it actually came about because the uh, notion of space. Um, I have a pretty large library right next to me here, uh, covers the whole wall. And at some point, I figured, well, I just, I'm kind of running out of space here, but these things are tiny. I can have as many as I want, all the classics, all the good ones, uh, variations and stuff, and it doesn't take almost any space. My entire, entire miniature library is the size of one regular book, give or take. Uh, it's also a great gift idea. I make them there almost, they cost almost nothing to make for myself, and I give them to friends, to family, uh, as gifts, as fun stuff, uh, special occasions, whatnot. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. So as I mentioned, the, the space was the idea. That's what really inspired me back in 2015. I was running out of space. I wanted this uh, uh, really nice book that came out that was pretty large. So I just decided to miniaturize it. And I started with a fairly manual process. I basically just took the text, minimized the font in uh, Microsoft Word, uh, the smallest possible font size available. And I picked a really small font as well and just printed it manually. Um, it took a bit of, of course, of time and that was very uh, labor intensive process. But after a while, I wrote a little piece of software, basically just a script, nothing too elaborate or too complicated. But it uh, takes the content of the book, the text, and automatically creates an HTML file that I can just, with one click, I can convert the text into that format, click print. And 10 minutes later, I have the printed pages and all I got to do is just cut and bind them together which takes, again, about 15 to 20 more minutes, give or take. Um, later on, I mean, at first I was cutting the paper by hand with a snap knife and, and ruler. Of course, that's also quite labor intensive. Also, it produces results that are sometimes a little bit inconsistent. After a while, I built a miniature cropper using some using an arbor press. I'm not sure if you know what that is. It's a tool that's designed to, to um, to compress or put pressure on things, but by attaching a blade to it at the end, I was able to create a cropper that's just the right size to make a miniature book with one press, and it's very kind of uniform and nice and easy to use, saves a lot of time as well. Uh, over those six years since then, I've actually sold quite a few of those miniature books, uh, some of them to just random acquaintances, some of them online. I've had booths in miniature shows and farmer's markets and sold uh, a bunch here and there. Didn't make really millions, but it really did cover most of the costs in building that cropper, for example, buying a really nice printer that I use for this kind of stuff, um, and a little bit of extra income here and there, so it's kind of fun. Um, most of the books that I've sold were actually two celebrities. Apparently, there's the word has gone around Hollywood or, I don't know, Vancouver, whatever. So I've got quite a few people who, people like Jim Gaffigan, for example, who uh, has a book out and he wanted a miniature of his. I think my most well-known customer is Mr. Barack Obama. One of his aides found out about my little hobby and he contacted me. Obviously, I didn't charge him for this. I just made him his book, The Audacity of Hope. And I uh, got a really nice personal thank you letter from the president at the time. So that was a lot of fun for me to have. Uh, I do have a website dedicated to this, uh, which has some pictures and some information, but I don't actually really actively promote or advertise anything. You know, a few requests come in per month and I don't spend a lot of time on it. It's mostly the majority of the books I make are for myself as for, for my hobby, hobby. I probably made about 150, maybe 200 books so far, um, unique individuals. And of course, 
uh, various copies. Now, since I spoke of sales, I obviously have to address the elephant, which is copyrights. Books are copyrighted material, um, not just the content itself, the text written, but also the cover. Cover art that's designed is copyrighted material, which means I can't just sell those books to whoever I want. There's limitations, there's laws, there's rules, there's ethics. I, I mean, I, I have, I'm an author myself. I publish numerous books, and I certainly don't want anybody profiteering of the stuff I've created. So I take that into consideration. Uh, the stuff that I make for myself is uh, obviously protected by the fair use clause and copyright law. So I don't really have to explain myself to anybody. But if I want to sell something, I do have to think about it. Um, in theory, I could ask for permissions from an author or a publisher, but that's really, really unrealistic. You know, Amazon is not going to go, yeah, sure, sell. There's just never going to happen. So I just basically, in, in terms of marketing and sales, I avoid anything that's protected. Um, stuff that isn't, you know, Alice in Wonderland, out of copyrights, I can do whatever I want. Uh, Bibles are really popular within my people. Uh, Korans, um, even the Book of Mormon, I, I've had people, uh, the, the, guys, the guys who come door to door to try to convince you to convert, they come in to my house, they knock, I end up making a sale. So that's kind of fun and nice. Um, so again, uh, whatever pretty much I want. Uh, a lot of my uh, customers, people who are interested, are people who are themselves authors. And as an author myself, I cannot deny authors have egos. So people who has a book out oftentimes want to have a miniature copy of their own book. And I've had probably half my sales are just like that. People who wrote something and want this as a conversation piece, as a gift to friends, family, their partner, spouse, and whatever. So that's a big, uh, big ticket item. Uh, now there are practical considerations. I, uh, I briefly showed the book, but this is typically how they look like. So as you can see, they're very small. They're typically about 40 millimeters by 25, so an inch and a half on an inch. And they have a thickness of about four millimeters, which is a fifth, quarter, quarter or fifth of an inch. So practically speaking, um, that means I cannot put the entire content of the book inside there. I do put some of it. So if you look inside, that is actually the content, the original content of the book. And if you have a magnifier, you can read that. Um, but obviously, like I said, even with a tiny, tiny font, a page this size fits about 180 words. Uh, well, typical books have about three to 500. And of course, four millimeters thickness means the book can be about 80 pages wide or thick. I, I can theoretically go as thick as I wanted, but you know, if I go above that, it will lose the proportion. It will not look like a book, but more like a box. So nobody wants that. And therefore I stick to that kind of length which means I can compress typically about a quarter to 10% of a regular normal book into one of these babies. Um, I, my, 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 the, the way I do the automation with the, with the script that converts the content into HTML means I cannot do the graphics that way. So the vast majority of my books do not have graphics at all. I did make a few manual um, handmade made books with content, for example, The uh, Little Prince, if anybody knows that book, I did put some of the illustrations, you know, the, the, the special tree, the snake, because that was really unusual and cute. I also made this specific one. This is a road atlas. So being a road atlas, it's just various maps and graphics that come in the original same kind of thing. And in this case, I kind of went even extra, the extra mile, and I made this, the binding uh, spiral just like a real road atlas would have. Not quite as uh, you know exact and precise as a professional book printer would do, because it had to be done manually, but it looks pretty cute and nice. Um, sometimes I do unique covers just like that. That was a neat binding, but sometimes I can do unique covers, such as uh, this item here this is the necronomicon the book of magic or witchcraft in this case the, the binding is made from faux leather and i used a special process to make a 3d indented um i'm not sure what's the word for it but basically protruding uh cover that has a skull on it so it kind of looks unique and special i just found a piece of jewelry that looked like a skull i used that to make an indentation into a piece of foam and then by putting the this faux leather on top of that and pressing, I created the indentation inversely into the, the cover and then just cut it to size to make that, that special cover to it. 
other special covers I made was this one. This is Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Ocean. Um, Jules Verne's work, is, if you are, if you heard, you know, has this connotation of steampunk, uh, which is one of my favorite topics. I do a lot of steampunk artwork, so in this case, I created a leather, it's actually a real leather cover on it, and just put some gears and this unique charm on top of it that makes, give it that extra little special look that uh, is fun to look at. I've only made one of these. It's a lot of work, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, another practical consideration is the fact that I'm doing the binding basically with glue, um, just like real books, but the surface area of the books obviously being so small means there's not a lot of glue on there and it doesn't hold as well as a you know, professionally printed book, which means these books can be opened if you want to read them, but they can be opened too widely. If I open it any further than this, which is about 40 degrees, it will actually break the glue. So um, in that sense, it's not the most practical thing. And I've had quite a few occasions with somebody bought a book being not aware of this, uh, opened it too wide or their kids were not careful enough and, and damaged it. And that's not possible to repair. So that's just a practical consideration. Um, I have not figured out a way to do it in a way that will hold any kind of weight. It's just the way it is. But I guess if you think about it, even real books, if you open them really, really too wide and flatten them, they also kind of tend to, to break the spine and not recover their full closed up uh, posture. Uh, as for the process itself, the way uh, this works, um, it's pretty straightforward. What I do is I locate, find, create, or make the content of the book. If it's a commercial by somebody who wants their specific book, then they would typically, if it's an author, they would send me their content. Uh, a lot of times I find it online. Um, Google Scholar has a lot of books available that you can view and download. Um, sometimes, if it's unusual, I find it on the sample, like the book, uh, the Octonomy that I made last month. The author actually has almost 20% of the book available online on their uh, on their website to download, so anybody can download it uh, and, and use that if they wanted to. Um, sometimes I just take the original book and scan it with a scanner. It's, of course, very labor intensive, but it's an option that exists. At Amazon themselves, many of their books you can just find online on Amazon itself. The uh, look inside feature allows you to view some of the book. And, you know, if they have 10, 15, 20 pages in there, that's all the content I need to make a book. Because, again, not all of it fits in those uh, 50, 60, 80 pages anyway. Uh, if books are protected, you know, if, if it's like a, like an ebook with a copyright protected PDF that I can't copy and paste from, I don't really bother. I don't start to hack and crack it around. Not only is that illegal, but it's really not worth the effort uh, because almost anything is available online if you know how to uh, manipulate Bing or Google. Uh, I've only once or twice ever in those six years there was any book that I wasn't able to to figure out that way. Um, I do need to clean up the text typically, so I, when I have the book, if it comes in a PDF or EPUB format or whatever it is, I typically have to spend some time cleaning it up. So I have to remove uh, the page numbering because that would be inaccurate after I miniaturize it. I remove uh, header pages, you know, the publisher's information, stuff that's redundant, extra line breaks, extra page breaks, whatever it is that I need. and. Um, then my uh, automatic script processes the raw text file and creates the HTML. The code is not super elaborate. I am not a professional developer. I've been writing code for a while, but you know it's nothing too elaborate. It basically just takes takes the raw text and splits it up in chunks chunks of about a thousand characters. That's about what fits inside a page. I do have some extra functions in there to make sure it doesn't break the text in the middle of a word or, you know, just one word before the end of a sentence. So there's a little bit of logic in there, but nothing too elaborate. I think it's maybe 30, 35 lines of, of code, pretty much. It uh, takes those pieces of text and splits them into those individual pages and then puts them inside HTML formatting of a table that gives it that specific size I, size I specified to fit on the print. Um, with the margins and uh, and definitions and sizes, and so I end up with a pay with a file that when I open it in the browser, it will literally already be split up into pages, and then I just go print, select two sides, two sided on my uh, laser printer. Uh, it's a Xerox that I have here, and it just spits out a bunch of pages. 
then I take those pages and I staple them together with a staple to keep it kind of organized and safe. And I used and I used first a large format cropper to just kind of rough cut the whole thing into a size of about two by two inches. Then I use um, glue. I use Scotch's glue like this. I found this to be, uh, it's called a rep- high performance repair glue, Home Depot, five bucks, I think. And this lasts forever and it's really strong and really easy to use. Also dries up really, really fast. So I just dabble a little bit on the side of the book, kind of smear it with my pinky. Um, I do this two, three, sometimes four times to give it a few extra layers. And then I use my special miniature cropper to give it a final cut. The HTML, the HTML generation scripts also create a cover page on top of it that has the frames or the size of the page printed. So that helps me align the cropper to cut exactly in, in the place and make it completely an accurate square or rectangle in that case. Uh, I do use regular copy paper for this. It's very available, of course, nothing special about it. Um, I do, there, there is a significant amount of waste because when I crop out the, the book, I crop out a piece that's one and a half by, by one inch from an eight by 11 page. So the rest of it pretty much goes to waste. Uh, and so I make sure that the, the copy paper I buy is uh, recyclable and easy to recycle and uh, economic in that sense. And I guess the costs, a bale, of bo- uh, a bale of paper, 500 pages and all that, comes down to about 25 cents in terms of costs per uh, book print. Um, I do have to use a laser printer, so I have, I mean, I have a Xerox printer that I got, uh, I found it at Goodwill, I think it was about 100 bucks. Uh, it has to be laser because the resolution uh, of these of this print of the tiny font has to be very very precise. I've not been able to find any inkjet printer that comes n- anywhere near the kind of precision to make this readable. But lasers, I print it at 1200 DPI and it looks terrific, readable. Um, not with the naked eye, but with a magnifier, it's pretty easy. I even make a miniature magnifier that's about this big. Some people have ordered that with their books and I always keep one around. Uh, I basically took a plastic kind of kids magnifier, cut off the size and made it into a miniature magnifier that's about one inch in size and it actually magnifies. Um, Let's see, we're halfway through in case you're wondering. Uh, Now, of course, this is just the insight for the content. And of course, the next step is the cover itself. Uh, Again, uh, most books are available with uh, on on whatever place or spot you can buy the book typically has that displayed with the with the with the cover. So I just take that image and uh, use Photoshop or similar graphics tools to resize it to the appropriate size. Um, In terms of graphics, there's a little more fine points to printing this, something uh, you might know those terms, bleed and uh, uh, crop marks to help me make sure that it's cut exactly to size. Ultimately, the cover is what's the most visible part of the book, so it has to be the most precise part. I use simple uh, inkjet printer and I print the cover on photo paper, which is both glossy and pretty and also um, slightly thicker than printer paper, so it gives the book the book's cover, that feel of, uh, of a, a paperback book, really. Sometimes I use even thicker cardboard if I want it to look like a, like a hardcover. Um, when I do, when, 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 when it's a book that's meant to be a piece of jewelry, some people have asked for it, I typically just use a small drill to drill holes at the top of it, and then I attach a uh, pinch clip kind of thing at the end, as you can see here that attaches to the book nicely and keeps and allows me to attach the chain to it. So that's one way I do it. Um, sometimes I make the books as a necklace like this. I've also made books in the form of a um, um, luck uh, charms bracelet. So uh, some somebody asked specifically, um, uh, a romantic partner wanted a, a, a charms bracelet with the Harry Potter books. So I made her a charms bracelet with all seven Harry Potter books in super miniature form, smaller than the usual size. Uh, usually, like I said, it's uh, 40 millimeters, but I made it about a quarter of that size. So all of them fit nicely on the bracelet without being too heavy. Um, when I do this, I also made a, a set of books in the forms of earrings. Uh, one cute idea was I had with uh, Alice uh, through the looking glass. So I made uh, two copies. One of them is a mirror of the other, left to right, right to left. So they fit really nicely on a pair of earrings and kind of 
metaphorically reflect the looking through the glass, uh, the looking glass motif that those books uh, are heavily influenced by. Um, I do have quite a bit of margin of error because with all the respect to my uh, miniature cropper, I'm an old man, I'm 47 years old, my eyesight is not what it used to be, and I sometimes miss or mess up, so I typically print three, four copies of the book, and then usually end up with at least two, sometimes three, that are in good condition, in the fourth or whatever, some one, one or two might have to go in the trash because they're not accurate enough. And sometimes it's out of shape, sometimes the crop didn't really go right. Um, at least once or twice I accidentally glued the wrong side of the book and that's really not good. But that's life, you know, nobody's perfect. Um, like I said, the cost comes down to about 25, uh, using uh, standard copy paper for Amazon, the cost comes down to about 25 cents per copy of the book. The cover, you know, with the uh, with the ink printing, uh, uh, color ink, and the copy paper adds to the price a little bit. So typically, the total cost would be, I guess, about half a dollar, sometimes a little more, if it's leather cover or something special. Um, when people buy them for me commercially, I sell them for typically about 35 bucks for a basic paper book. More if the cover is more elaborate, unique, or special. If it's, I've even made uh, some with metal covers. I've made Bibles with a little cross on the top that adds to the cost a little bit. So I try to work with people and be reasonable because my motivation is not commercial. I'm not trying to make money from this venture. God knows I make quite a bit as an engineer and I, uh, I'm well off. So I make this mostly just just for fun. And uh, so basically it's kind of at the cost. I mean, if I spend 45 minutes working on the book to make it, then at 35 bucks, I'm not really making any profits here. Um, obviously, if somebody books, uh, uh, if an author, let's say, wants 10 copies of their books, then the second, third, fourth are a lot less laborious because I already converted the text and prepared the file, and it's just a matter of glue and cut. It doesn't take that long, so it's done uh, pretty fast and uh, makes the costs a lot cheaper. Um, other books I've made, unique ideas, I mentioned uh, the Necronomicon, I've shown you these. Um, I made these things here. This is a miniature comic book. So it's, um, it's if anybody recognizes, this is the first issue of the of uh, Action Comics where Superman was first introduced back in the uh, 40s. So obviously being comics, it has to be full color. So it's just a manual print job. It's not using any script or any content. I just took the original content, which is freely available online. Uh, miniaturized it, printed it in small, and cut it just like uh, you would with a typical comic book. So it's kind of cute. Um, other things I've done, I've done a medical book that contains medical diagrams. Uh, that was a gift from my doctor who I um, admire to say the least. He saved my life numerous times, so I really felt he needed something special. I've made uh, a copy of a script of the Star Wars movie. So uh, not only was it printed, but I also kind of used uh, Tic Tac binding so that it makes it look like a regular script is bound. It's very unique. Um, I, um, I mentioned I made photo books for a lot of people, just people who, uh, I would say a lot of uh, new mothers, but others as well, people who are, you know, love their family. They would send me a bunch of 15, 20, 30 books. I would print them miniature and create a book and they would wear them on their neck, I guess, uh, instead of carrying the photo in the wallet or whatever other people do or on their phone. It's very unique. I mentioned Bibles. Religion is a big deal. People order all kinds of uh, religious texts. I've had, I've done Hebrew Bible, English Bible, Quran in English and Arabic, um, the book, um, uh, the Book of Mormon. A few. Uh, I've done a Gita, which is the Hindu religious book, um, followed by some Hindus. Uh, that was also pretty popular. I have made a miniature, very, very extra small miniature uh, of Book of the Ripley's, believe it or not. Um, I'm sure you've heard of them. So they have a lot of books out, and I made one of them for them as a miniature, which they have uh, on display, I believe, in their um, museum in Florida. So they, they, they heard about my work. They contacted me. I made that special for them, and it's on display. So it's a fun point of pride for me, I guess. Uh, and then, of course, I made other stuff that's not exactly book, but also in the realm of print and media. I've made several miniature card decks, different designs and style. I've made several tarot uh, card decks, both lower and upper arcanas. I have a lot of friends who are in the Wicca community, so they love that kind of stuff. 
and I've made different styles, both more vintage and more modern designs. Uh, I've made one Pantone color scale. If you've ever seen those, it's kind of like an elongated piece of media that has all the colors printed on it for reference. Graphic designers live by those things, so a graphic designer that's a very close friend asked for that, and I made them for him. Yeah, pretty simple stuff, just you know, print the, the, the ribbons, cut them, and glue them together. I have made one game of Monopoly. Um, the board, all the cars, all the streets... Um, all the action cards and, and game cards all fits nicely. I even made, of course, the money, uh, the bills of different denominations. All fits in a really small box about this big. Really, really cute. Completely not playable, but uh, a lot of people like that. And probably the top of my creation, the height of my work, is a miniature pop-up book, which actually took almost 20 hours of work to make because I've had to make each and every individual page manually. Um, I took a book from the series of Mr. Men. I'm not sure if all you've heard of it. It's not very common in America. It's basically a uh, series of books that t t tell about kids' characters and how they learn various life lessons and stuff. So I picked one of them and designed individual 10 pages based on the original story portrayed in the book and just designed different effects and movements and moving parts. Uh, on one of them, there's a lever on the top that you pull with a tweezer and it makes uh, a wheel rotate with one of the characters. Another has a flap that you move and it makes the character appear to smile. Just different ideas and different things. Um, definitely uh, an unusual amount of work and uh, uh, it's also very thick because of all the uh, elements involved, so it's, uh, it's pretty big and nice. Um, if anybody's curious more about the mini cropper I mentioned earlier, uh, what I did was I basically got an Arbor Press from Harbor Freight Tools, the tool store. Uh, I believe it was something in the $30 to $40 range. And then I glued a piece of window holder. So um, I'm not sure what's the official name of that hardware piece, but it's a piece that's designed to hold pieces of glass in place with thumb screws. So I was able to glue it to the bottom of the arbor press, and then I can stick a snap blade in there or any kind of uh, metallic blade. It holds it in place, and then I just push it down. On the bottom, I just put a small um, cutting mat, like a five by five cutting mat uh, to keep the blade sharp. And every you know, 10, 15 books, I have to replace the blade, but those are a dime a dozen, so it's pretty easy and simple. And that's what I've been using. So all in all, the process, I guess, start to finish, could take a couple of hours with all the editing of the text and gluing and the cropping, waiting for the glue to dry um, and all the printing, but it's not that complicated and that's how I made so many. And that's why it's so much fun. And that is my spiel. So it was faster than I, uh, than some of you may have thought. Um, hope you find this interesting and uh, I'm open and glad to answer any questions and any thoughts about the topic. It was perfect. Before we jump into any questions, oh, yep, round of applause. There we go. That's what I was going to ask for. Thank you. So cool. Thank you. Very cool. I hope you don't mind. I linked your site in the chat too. Um, so, sure. Uh, uh, Petite Rose is the site. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So we did have a couple questions from the chat, and then we can just open it up to discussion. Um, <laughs> first question is from uh, Scan. Have you considered latex? Um, latex for what purpose? Uh, Scan, are you still on the call? You want to answer that? Kind of elaborate a little bit. As in, as in a cover for a book? I know. I'm good. I don't think Scan is on. I'll get, I'm going to make a guess that it's for the text editing instead of HTML. Oh, oh, a coding. Um, no, I mean, I I wrote this six years ago. It's been very effective. It's simple, small, runs, takes an instant to create a file. Uh, I don't see any way it could be improved or easier. So there's really no reason for me to spend any more time beyond that. Um, just one go, it produces a file, and I hit print. Fantastic. Thank you, Chris. And then, uh, Chris, you had a question. Um, what about hiding an it's NFC strong. tag? inside that contains a digital copy of the book. That is a wonderful idea. It hasn't occurred to me. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, technically, yeah, that's something I would definitely um, be interested in looking into. Uh, so I will. Sounds, that's a great idea. Thank you. Awesome. Right on. 
Which is full of great ideas. Obviously, copyright might might be an issue. I mean, I'm not trying to really sell the content. I'm selling an, a, a jewelry or an artifact. Um, it's just unique. I mean, you probably have seen miniature books. I mean, if you go to uh, Michael's store, for example, they have miniature books on sale in their uh, miniature section. Uh, it's like a bag with four or five of them. But like the vast majority of miniature books in the world, they're blank. They, they look like a book. They even have individual pages, but they're blank. And uh, the unique part about my book is that they do actually contain the content, uh, which is both important to the whoever author wants their own book in, in miniaturized. But in terms of a conversation piece, there's there's a lot more cuteness to opening the book and actually seeing the words on the page and trying to read them and seeing them rather than just something that appears like a book. Uh, miniature makers, people who make miniature dioramas or you know uh, book nooks, we mentioned book nooks in the in the discussion alias. So this typically would have stuff that doesn't need to be moved or changed so they can uh, use this kind of books. And I've seen uh, people who make books from small blocks of wood that just look like uh, they have the, the look of a cover, sometimes even with gold, in, in gold inlays, but they have no need or intention of having the content in there. And since most of my books are typically used as a jewelry item or a conversation piece, it's very important to have the content. Um, yeah. Good to know. Uh, Corey Ross, you just put a question in the chat. Did you want to come off mute and ask your question? Uh, yeah, I was, I was wondering if you had tried any thinner paper other than just regular copy paper to get like, more more flexible pages or just more pages in the book. Yes, I've experimented with several types of, of paper. Uh, cost would be a factor. Uh, when I started out, I didn't have much support from my family, so I really had to cut down on costs, and I used the cheapest possible paper. I can afford better now, but I've experimented with different thicknesses and styles. Um, they don't work well with the printer. That's the main problem. So um, thinner paper gets caught up in the wheels and ends up causing problems or even worse, I have ruined one printer at some point. Thank God for Goodwill, it's very cheap, but it's, uh, it's a problem. Uh, I can print on thicker paper. So I mentioned that the cover is using photo paper, which is thicker and my inkjet printer has no problem with this. Um, but I, I don't know if there would be much benefit to, to, to printing the content on thicker paper, but I guess it's possible. Uh, recycled paper, uh, recycled paper could also be fun for some stuff, uh, some of the more colored and unique items. Um, Great. Any yeah. other uh, questions? You can come off mute. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, okay, obviously perfect. that uh, in the uh, Owen's uh, post is the Panton one. Yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah, it's really cute. And the miniature pencils that are next to it are actually from Michaels. I bought them. Didn't make those. Uh, Sakishu paper, I am not familiar with that term. I don't know what that means. I guess it's a specialty thin paper. Uh, if you think it will be different than what I've tried, I certainly would look into it. Uh, but like I said, I've tried different thicknesses of different types and they all cause problems. Sometimes they just, the wheels just don't pick it up. And some, and a lot of times it was just jammed inside the printer. And of course, assuming the paper is even um, in terms of pores and uh, uh, fiber design that to even absorb the inkjet ink correctly. There were a few pages and types of paper that I played with that did go through correctly, but the uh, ink, the uh, laser ink, did not bind to them properly when it was uh, going through the oven, and that ended up just looking choppy. Or uh, um, and of course, crisp and clear printing is really really important when your font is so microscopic. So even small artifacts in print that some papers cause would make the whole thing um, completely unreadable. So that's just wasn't practical many times. Awesome. If there's any other questions, feel free to come off mute and uh, ask over yeah. the call. Yeah, and of course, uh, as everybody knows, I am, I am with Microsoft, so you can uh, reach me over either the group or directly in the gal, Ben Airy is my, uh, is my, uh, my name. And I'm always open to discussing my hobby and my uh, pleasure. So don't don't be a stranger. And you know, maybe in a few months I'll actually see you in the garage. Once we reach uh, what is it, stage six? Yeah, fingers crossed. We're, we're all hopeful it's around the corner. <laughs> yeah, I did. Ha I do have behind me my Glowforge, which um, 
which I bought after oh, wow. everything. I had to had, couldn't stop lasering, so I bought a glow for it. But that's a different topic. Got your own makerspace on there. I love it. I love it. Pretty much, yeah. Well, perfect. If, is there any other questions? I have a um, quick survey I'm going to send out. If there's any questions, though, feel free to come off mute uh, while we're doing that. It's, it's literally four questions, so nothing too crazy. Um, but if you have any questions for Ben, feel free to hop off. Thanks, everybody, for joining today. I hope you, could, you had a good time and uh, hope to see you out there. Thank you.